Здравствуйте, друзья. Мы продолжаем 14-й выпуск Android в лицах. Сегодня получится не совсем стандартный выпуск, потому что сегодня мы в гостях Фернандо, и мы будем говорить по-английски. Uh, hi, Fernando. Hello. How is it going? <laughs> it's good. good. Yeah. It's great to see you, and it's great to uh, see you in our video blog. You are first uh, English speaker. <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad to see you. It's a pleasure for me. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry for probably some uh, not uh, clear sound because it's uh, full. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, some strange idea yeah. which we tried to uh, create. And today, yes, spontaneous. Yes, very spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> yes. Uh, so today we'll try to ask some interesting question for you. And uh, probably first question was. Uh, how is your uh, look at clean architecture and uh, are you using clean architecture in your uh, real production? All right. So, yeah, basically, um, yeah, I wrote about clean architecture a few years ago. And, uh, yeah, my take is like, the first thing I usually like to say is that there is no magical formula. There is no any architecture that is going to solve all your problems. So that's why it depends on your requirements. You might use one architecture and the other, or the or another one. Um, on Android, it it works pretty well, generally speaking. Um, but for instance, usually you have to evolve your code. You have to like really solve your own problems. Uh, when I created my sample of clean architecture, it was not meant to to solve everyone's problem it was it, it was just a way a different way of developing for android uh you know for more testability and and, and actually many people adopt it and and they're using it in production uh in my projects i'm not it depends on the project but like usually for example to give an example regarding soundcloud we are using a similar approach but we needed to like modify it a little bit because it was not fitting our requirements but we we are still respecting all the solid principles and the essence of clean architecture so i would say it's a it's a nice solution but always you need to to adapt it to your to your requirements and needs okay. so uh your company on cloud you, yes. you are using this architecture only on android uh, side or probably uh ios guys yes. like it too Yeah, well, that's that's the thing about architecture, and, and my initial uh, idea was that you can apply an architecture to any platform in the end. It's an architectural approach. It has nothing to do with Android, and and that's why I always say it's it's nice to run away of any framework. So um, on iOS, for example, they are taking a similar approach again, and that's the the, the good thing about this approach because you can reuse it everywhere. Like there was no implementation on mobile when I wrote those articles, and but it was something that was working on backend and <coughs> in, in other you know software platforms. Um, so I would definitely say, yeah, it's portable. You can you know take it to one place or to the other. Okay, uh, you say so you make some different different uh, for some improvement for clean architecture for yes. your solution. Uh, What, what, uh, what about this uh, difference, and uh, why you do it? You have some problems or some? No, I mean, so there, there's special requirements. When I created this sample app, it was just a list of things. I mean, most of the time you you have a specific requirements in our app. I mean, it's very complex in terms of multi-threading, and and it has a background sync. Um, So I, I haven't thought about that when I created this example, because again, I cannot solve everyone's problems. You, I can give you an idea, and then from there, you need to modify things and to adapt those things to your, to your, uh, to your use cases. Um, in our case, yes, mainly was because of um, multi-threading, and we, are, we, are, we, are have, we have an offline mode, and we have a lot of data being synchronized mm -hmm. in the background. So there are some places where you cannot use a model view presenter, for example, at UA level because you don't have UI. For example, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're using a service, uh, <coughs> when you're using a background syncer, and, um, and especially with multi-threadings in our player, uh, we are 
you know, launching uh, five or six threads at the same time in parallel. And it was, you know, one use case would not work pretty well because we needed to synchronize all the threads all together. And there were some specific things that we needed to touch. But overall, again, we are still using the essence of clean architecture. We have our uh, domain layer, we have our use cases, we have our repository pattern, and we are using different data sources. Yeah. You, I agree with you that it's, uh, it's a good uh, solution, but probably it can be some other solution. Yeah. Probably you read about MBI from Hans Dorfman. Uh, what yeah. you can say about this solution? Do you like it? I mean, well, I mean, I'm not aware of like the details of this uh, of these approaches. Um, sometimes I read. It's like when people ask me about the MVVI, MVVM. Um, from my perspective, is I would say like just use whatever works for you. Again, there's no silver bullet. Something that is going to solve everyone's problem. So. Um, for 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 this approach, maybe the reason why he created was because it was a good fit for, for for his problems, and then of course he shared it and and I you know probably got some feedback from the community. I I don't have specific information on how that works, but for me the reason why I like MV, MVPs uh, is because everyone knows it. It's a very well-known pattern, and it's pretty easy to to pick up. You will go to the code and you will see, oh, this is an MVP, and it's not any other, uh, I don't know, pattern invented or something like that. And I can have whole control over um, my views and, and, and my presenters, and it doesn't matter reason. And regarding MVVM, uh, I don't personally like uh, the way Google implemented it because um, it encourages you to, to do a lot of configuration and I kind of lose control of what's going on. So I've, I've, that's why I opted for MVP, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so you, you don't like data binding, correct? No, it's not that. I mean, I like the pattern, but mm -hmm. I, I don't like the way it's implemented uh -huh. in hand okay. because it, it requires much configuration mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, yeah. What about other technologies, other libraries? What is your uh, default uh, stack in your yeah. company? All right, I would say like uh, nowadays, of course, you need a dependency injection framework. It doesn't matter which one you use. Um, oh, there's a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are having fun anyway. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, but a dependency injection is a must. Um, I, I couldn't imagine myself developing an Android app without RxJava. I think this, to bring up this functional reactive programming approach, it makes things a lot easier, even though it requires some, some, some time in order to get up to speed because the learning curve is a bit steep. And, um, and then, yeah, it's your good architecture and your creativity and imagination. Mm -hmm. Uh, you say about uh, good uh, instruments, good libraries. Yes. What about Kotlin? Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, I'm in favor of like modern languages like Kotlin and on iOS Swift. I think um, they're gonna save you a lot of time. Uh, I think they're mature enough to be used in production. It's been demonstrated by many companies using it at a bigger scale. And um, yeah, of course, why not? Um, I think the good thing about Kotlin is that it interrupts perfectly with Java. So at any point, you could introduce any Kotlin classes and it would work. Yeah. It's a great idea. And uh, I think it's great. it will be a great question. You tried and you, you was in many countries. You, you hear, you saw and speak with many developers. Yeah. You can see, you can say that. Uh, it's just, it is Kotlin popular in Asian countries and yes. in the world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and the good thing is like Kotlin and these modern languages has learned a lot from other languages, from other languages' mistakes. Like mm -hmm. Kotlin has learned a lot from Java and it, it, bring, it brought up a lot of new functionalities and it has like functions as far as uh, citizens, which is great. And, and, and it's really a pleasure when you write uh, coding Kotlin. You can, you can tell that you fall in love right away. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, 
Uh, can you say something about uh, some about maybe probably about uh, your usual uh, team or usual uh, process how you work? So basically, at SoundCloud, I'm part of the core engineering uh, team, which um, is about working on cross-cutting concerns, things that affect the, the whole application, like data layer, uh, dependency injection, um, yeah, things like that. So. Lately, I haven't touched uh, much Android. So usually my day is like to review PRs, um, to attend to meetings, uh, review emails, um, write code. But sometimes I have to jump to the mobile API because we are we are developing or we are maintaining the mobile API built in Scala and, and things like that. Uh, working methodology is what I mentioned yesterday in my talk, which was uh, we use uh, we use what works for us. It's not a pure agile methodology like Scrum or Kanban. It's like a mix, um, and, and yeah, we we organize our teams in in a core team. Uh, we have feature teams, and we have a tech lead, and we have a test engineering team. Basically, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it's interesting how you work with uh, or uh, how much work uh, in your company do business analytics. Do you have some this role? Yes, yeah, of course. I mean, the, there is people specialize in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in collecting data. Mm -hmm. Everything must be anonymous. We don't know um, what you're doing as a user, but we can collect data in, in, in terms of general user behavior. And then that, that data is useful, is very useful to improve your app, mm -hmm. right? To get better at it in terms of usability, performance, yeah, whatever. Uh, in the future, we will have some interesting solutions, interesting libraries, some uh, which will solve some interesting uh, problems. What do you think about which problems we have right now, and uh, what uh, what was interesting uh, and uh, new solution, new libraries which you uh, saw probably half year on right now? Yeah, I think um, I haven't seen much about uh, real time monitoring for your app uh, in terms of performance. Um, we are we are kind of working on something internally. Uh, we have our own monitoring system, which is Prometheus, and it's very famous um, in the entire community. I cannot tell you what's going to happen in the future because things move so fast. I think it's things are going to be around uh, machine learning. I think there is a lot of investigation and research in that field, but not in mobile. So I think at some point. That's gonna become popular in mobile, but uh, yeah, honestly, the community around um, software engineering it's so big that it's. I mean, there's tons of libraries, and you have GitHub that it's the biggest code base ever, and you can find pretty much everything. When you think that you have a good idea, then you go to GitHub and you find something that is already there, yeah. working and being used by many people, right? So that's that's my 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 thought on that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Uh, yes. Probably you 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 saw and you read about uh, Kotlin native. Uh, well, I mean, I have only some information, but yeah, I know yeah. yeah that the idea is to kind of write native code in mm -hmm. Kotlin, right? But no, yes, if you can uh, use Kotlin for for yeah. for probably for uh, for code some uh, application for uh, iOS or for. Uh, uh, Switch uh, your uh, C++ code to Kotlin. Oh, okay. So it's going to translate into uh, uh, it, it, machine code, like yeah, C++, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, yes. Uh, how do you think about this idea? Uh, probably we will, it will be great or uh, it will be a good idea to start to use Kotlin as a main language for iOS. I mean, I think... In I, the team where you have Android team and iOS team. Well, I mean, it, it's very early to say that yeah yeah, yeah but it's course. just idea yeah so mm -hmm. i would say like i mean c plus plus has been there for a long time and and honestly if you had to touch it it's just like so tough and so so difficult sometimes a lot of things happen that you don't know why and by having modern languages like kotlin which you know i told you it's it's really a pleasure to write kotlin code um I think it's a, it could be a game changer because um, it, it's the same. I think it's the same from Swift. Like they are trying to, you know, create some kind of Android runtime, and I think it doesn't matter. I think uh, you know this is good for us because we have options. 
um, they are trying to come up with better solutions. And I think it's a, it's a very healthy, let's say, I wouldn't say competition, but it's a very healthy contribute, contribution to, to the ecosystem, right? So, yeah, why not? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, hopefully we're going to see that up and running. It would be super nice. <laughs> I agree with you. But maybe you have some uh, words to say for viewers or some ideas. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, just yeah. guys, you know, my, my advice is always like explore new technologies, be curious, learn out of experience. You have a GitHub to learn from, read articles, share your knowledge because, you know, We, when we speak or when we write articles, it's nice because we are sharing, <clears throat> but at the same time, we are learning. I mean, I learned a lot so far here because of the questions that people were asking me. And I would definitely say, like, go for it and don't be shy. Okay, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you was, very much. Yeah. It was from the Texas. Yeah, uh, nice. Great uh, yeah. yeah, perfect. Uh, and uh, just... Uh, ask some questions and <laughs> yes you can follow me on twitter uh usually i'm very active there yeah. so you can type my name and, and you're gonna come up with we will twitter add account. link in description for this video perfect and, yeah thank perfect. you for your time bye <laughs> thank you very much see you guys bye